Welcome to the Movie Guard Society podcast brought to you by Neurotropolis. I'm your host, Sean Toshmer, the mayor of Neurotropolis. And joining once again is my co-host, Drew Mudhausen, the professional media and movie mastermind who found his way to sneak in to Hall H. He had no credentials. Don't tell security about this, but Drew snuck into Hall H, everyone. I'm actually in the picture behind me. Um, I'm one of them in the in the Doom masks. I'm one of those. I'm not going to tell you which one because uh, I'll leave it a mystery, but I'm I'm there on the stage. I, I wasn't really there. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to talk about. You know, usually in this podcast, we explore the world of cinema from beloved classics to the latest blockbusters. We just had the great milestone of episode 50, which was all about Deadpool on Wolverine, so check that out. But we continue to ride the MCU train with the big news from San Diego Comic Con. So we thought it was very fitting for episode 51 to continue that because, I mean, it is nutty, that's all I can say. But before we get into that, we want to make sure you can connect with us online. You can find me on almost every single social media platform at Shantaj. Follow Nerdtropolis at Nerdtropolis. And don't forget to visit Nerdtropolis.com for your daily dose of movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers. And Drew, where can they find you when you're not contributing to Nerdtropolis? You can find me at Drew Munhausen on all the different social media platforms over Letterboxd, logging movies. I just logged my rewatch of Deadpool and Wolverine because I went and saw it again last night. Um, or you can find me here uh, at the Movie Goer Society, where we're usually reviewing movies. But in this case, we're going to be talking a little bit of there's just the, the news is too big not to not to comment on. Right. It's it's movies regardless. It is movies. But also don't forget to catch up on past episodes of the Movie Goer Society. Like I said, we've done. 50 episodes, great milestone. And also make sure to tune into my podcast, Real Insights on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course, the Nerdtropolis YouTube channel. I just dropped a new interview with Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob SquarePants. I got more coming away, some TMNT stuff. Uh, a lot more coming, a lot of great stuff coming your way. Uh, Drew, yeah, you mentioned that you did see Deadpool and Wolverine again. Anything you missed that you caught on the rewatch? I would say a lot of the the jokes, like one liners, I was able to hear better this time. I think just because it was a more toned down experience, there wasn't the hype of looking for the next cameo when you kind of know what to expect and know who's going to show up and when it lets you just kind of experience the movie. I laughed out loud a lot more this time. I think I heard a lot more jokes that I missed the first time around. Um, I would say, though, that the exposition side of it drags a lot more on rewatch when you're like, I just want to see this part because I know this really cool things about to happen or this really fun things about to happen. So I think that the exposition scenes drag more on rewatch, but it's still extremely fun well you helped contribute to you know almost close to 500 million dollars worldwide i think last time i looked it was at 444 more to come i'm sure i'm sure it's an edging to 500 million uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little dead people humor there uh but yeah uh all right so san Diego comic-con I got to go for the first time last year covering it for neurotropolis i was invited back this year but could not make it um july is always busy but Looking forward to returning next year. But yeah, a little bit of FOMO, a little bit of FOMO for sure. Um, the Hall H panel for Marvel, another game changer. I felt like Deadpool Wolverine, and we talked about this, to me it was a game changer because it kind of told you anything is possible. There's really no written rules anymore, I feel like. I mean, they're making rules as they go, and it's just you got to accept them and move forward with it. Um, but I was on Twitter X refreshing refreshing getting my you know news i have even had uh one of our citizens out there marie was out there and i was like hey you're in this panel give me like a heads up of what they're talking about so i can just be on alert and so i got some heads up on that um major announcements left everyone buzzing and we're going to talk about everything else that was announced in hall h for marvel but we want to start off with the biggest shocker um uh, first off it was announced russo brothers are returning that was already in the rumblings um last week or so and it made a lot of sense i didn't know why they left the mcu after the last two avengers films keep them for the avengers films let them they know how to work with all the actors it's not easy to handle a-listers big names big egos big storylines and so forth 
So that was the big announcement. So before we get into the second part of it, what do you think about the official announcement that Russo's are back for the next two Avengers films? Uh, I think it's I think it's a good team up. I think that this is a situation where the two organizations being Marvel and the Russos needed each other. Um, you know, they've been doing ever since Avengers Endgame, they've produced a lot of movies and they've they've directed a couple more. Um, and the ones that they've directed have been kind of critically annihilated, had really big budgets and things used a lot of their Avengers cast members that they've worked with previously, Tom Holland and Chris Evans, et cetera. Um, but I think that they've been, they've actually had a really successful run of producing. You know, they were producers on everything, everywhere, all at once. They won best picture at the Oscars. They're producers on the um, extraction movies that star Chris Hemsworth, which have been a, a really big success for Netflix. So like they've had a lot of producing success, but the directing side, I think they need a win. And I think they know how to direct Marvel movies. They know the Marvel formula. They've had uh, immense success with Captain America and Avengers movies i think this is just the right team up when marvel really needs them yeah so they came on stage it was great everyone was kind of waiting for the official announcement because it was in the trades and on the news and you know first they went ahead before they talked before like if we return we want to do secret wars well so that's coming out i believe in 2027 and i think that was the first announcement was Secret Wars happening. The date was May of 2027. I think there's a specific date that was announced right afterwards. Um, so that's the second Avengers film. Uh, so I knew that was coming. So I'm super excited for Secret Wars. A lot of us are familiar with that storyline. Uh, and then, you know, going back a little bit, it was supposed to be Avengers Kang Dynasty. You know, all that turmoil, all that stuff. We don't know what's going on with the Kang character, but it feels like that storyline kind of got finished with Loki season two, but not completely. Uh, so we don't know what's going to happen with that. So everyone was speculating what the Avengers before Secret Wars is going to be. And then we get the announcement that it is Avengers Doomsday. As you see behind Drew, there's a lot of Dr. Dooms back there. And I had not, I did not even know Dr. Doom was even in the talks right now. I know there's Fantastic Four, but I didn't think they were going to announce anything of casting and make it a surprise whenever Fantastic Four came out, if that was the case. But the Russo brothers decided they wanted to be part of the announcement, make the biggest buzz at San Diego Comic Con, and pretty much said, you know, we need the best actor in the world to play Dr. Doom. And then here steps out a Dr. Doom in mask with a bright green attire different than what you see behind drew and i think drew will insult his head a little bit and they it's, announced this is pre pre, oh, is pre. Being oh so no, we don't have that so it's pre which is great but if you go on the facebook page we have all the crazy announcements that in fact the return to the mcu mr tony stark himself robert downey jr is returning and he will be playing dr doom in avengers doomsday and most likely will appear in fantastic four which is called the first steps Mind but they haven't confirmed he's in Fantastic Four, right? No, they're they assuming not. that. We're assuming that, especially with the timing with everything. And, and, and to be honest, I think the reason they did the announcement, not the decision, I'm pretty sure the decision was made before, the announcement is because as things are now being filmed today for Fantastic Four, you see already see the Fantastic Four, the Baxter building, whatever they have is being made. There's going to be shots of prior art. Robert Downey Jr. at some point on, on set, maybe. And maybe that's why they're trying to get ahead of it. And that's what this was. I don't think you could keep it a secret. Somehow someone's going to figure out why is he in London? What is going on? Just like when they spotted uh, McGuire and, and uh, Andrew Garfield at Atlanta, the airport. Maybe this is their way to ballet. I could be completely wrong. And not saying he's going to have a major ro role in Fantastic Four. It could be. Um, but we'll learn soon if that's the case or not. There, there'll be some spottings, maybe, if that's the case. Uh, but yeah, Robert Downey Jr. somehow is going to become Dr. Doom and the MCU. Definitely know this is going to be a, a variant of Dr. Doom, you know, because he's going to look like if he shows his face, which everyone says, why would he show his face? Dr. Doom always have his mask on, but you don't hire Robert Downey Jr. Play, pay him $80 million to hide his face. So first off, Drew, what did you initially thought? What was, what was your thinking when they announced <laughs> this? And RDJ comes out, reveals the mask. 
very Iron Man esque, which was amazing. Very Robert Downey Jr. esque, and the whole crowd just went crazy. So I was kind of right there doing the same as you, right? I was refreshing Twitter. I'm trying to see what's going on as they're doing these announcements. And to be completely honest with you, uh, when the when I first saw the tweets announcing it, I questioned if I was on a parody account of something like I thought I was on a fake news account that was trying to swerve me. And then I started confirming that, like, oh, no, this is really new, r- real news. So that was my first take. Um, so once I realized it was real, of course, it was the same thing as anybody else. Shock. Ah, uh, you know. I was kind of amazed. It, ultimately, I'm excited at the end of the day. There's a lot of questions, of course, that come with this news. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty excited for it. Um, as surprised as I am excited, I, I will say I had a friend that texted me probably sometime last week, and he reads all the the news and behind the scenes and the rumors. And I, you and I have talked about this at length before. I just try not to give much credit to the rumors because sometimes the MCU rumor mill can go a little bit off the rails with things that people are predicting. But surprisingly, this was in the rumor mill that was, I saw that was mentioned a week or two ago. And I don't know if that was just a wild guess or it, it happened. <laughs> that's all I can yeah, say. Th- that's, I had a friend text me. He's like, my fr- you know, I heard this. Do you think this is even a possibility? And my initial response was no. I was like, Downey just won an Oscar for playing a non-MCU character. I think he's going to use the prestige of his Oscar win to have the a- a- and the fame and money he has from doing the Marvel movies to basically be able to do whatever he wants. That's what I thought. I'm like, I don't think he's eager to return to the MCU was my take. Obviously, I was wrong. They have lured him back. Um, I'm sure the paycheck helps with that because he's going to get a whole lot of money for, you know, potentially two movies or more. It could be if he's in Fantastic Four also, because I'm under the impression he's in both Avengers movies um that are coming out and uh yeah i mean there's uh, it's a lot to take in i do think now that i've had time to sit on the news a little bit i am still excited about it but i definitely think it's it's a big um like distraction in a way a purposeful distraction i think that the Everything that happened behind the scenes with Jonathan Majors and or I would really should say in the public that's happened with Jonathan Majors. It's it's all out there. There's been a lot of questions as far as what they'll do with Kang. Will they recast? What, what are they going to do? They've put so much stock in him. How do they pivot? They've they're so deep already. And I think that the writer strike last year probably helped Marvel a little bit to give them the extra time they needed to really figure out what they were going to do and pivot to to a different big bad. And I think that doom is, is the best choice to pivot to. And so I think that this is a really good way to get fans to like, don't think about the Kang stuff. Just don't, don't think about any of that. Just let it all go. And now look here, we have Robert Downey Jr. On a golden pedestal as Dr. Doom. And uh, I'm not even saying that's a bad strategy. I think that's a great strategy. It worked. It's worked for me. I'm, this has given me something exciting to look forward to. And I'm a much bigger fan of Doom as a villain than I am for, am for Kang anyways. I'm much more excited about what the future has in store and the potential of Dr. Doom and what you can do there from a, um, a Marvel Cinematic Universe spanning story. I feel like there's there's a, a lot you can do. So um, I'll throw it back to you, of course. But I, I mean, I have a lot of questions. Is he, is he Tony Stark as Doom? But they said he was Victor Von Doom. Is he is he Victor Von Doom in this universe, but looks like Tony Stark? Um, it makes sense that the Fantastic Four movie, they've been saying it's a period place and it's in a in a different universe than the typical marvel universe so that makes sense if that's their doom and he looks like tony stark i don't know i'm these are just i'm just spitballing here but uh what what do you think sean such a bold move i mean i will say that and i love the fact that you know rdj came out and he was like i like playing complicated characters and dr doom is probably one of the most complicated characters and much better than kang as a villain and 
has more of a marquee name and i just love i love seeing that background behind you like the green like it's kind of iconic to me even though we don't haven't seen really a true dr doom in a long time and what, what do you say he was like uh new mask same task he came out saying and I think it's a fascinating shift. I think it's just not any villain. He's a genius. He's a ruler. He has a very dark side. And with Robert Downey Jr., he's going to bring something totally different. We speak about what it's, who is it going to be? Like, what is this doom? Where is this doom from? Deadpool Wolverine showed us there's so many variants of everything out there in different worlds, and they can co collide in any moment and somehow cross paths in any way. There's a different million ways, you know, you can cross over to a different earth. May it be with the TVA or with the sling that um, Dr. Strange has, or they have, you know, there's so much, so many different ways. And so it'll be interesting to see if he's in this fantastic four. Is this, this fantastic four, Dr. Doom? It's definitely not the main sacred timeline. I think they call it earth 616 at all, obviously, because he's going to look just like our Tony Stark. So where is he coming from is the question, but it's, I think we'll learn more as we figure out what this true story is of the fantastic for the first steps. And uh, I don't know what else is going to come after that. That's really going to explain anything for doomsday, any other opportunities really to do any other types of introduction because the, the next slates, you know, are pretty grounded films with thunderbolts and uh brave new world. And I can't think of any other opportunity to really dive into this multiverse other than the Fantastic Four, which obviously has Galactus. If you see some of the, the, the leaks from that panel, you see Galactus and also see the futuristic retro 60s world they have and the Fantastic Four vehicle and some of their suits and what the thing looks like, kind of a silhouette and everything. And it just looks, this is very, the Fantastic Four, the first steps look so fantastic, I must say. Yeah, I've seen the leaked footage on TikTok and different places. I don't yeah. You know, what I've seen, it looks to be kind of some of the better Marvel stuff I've seen in a while. Like I'm really excited for the style and, and what they seem to be doing here. So what are you thinking? What's your theory about this Doom? And to be honest, there's been a lot of variations where Iron Man is Doom or Victor Von Doom transfers his like, mind into Tony Stark and takes the mantle, all this stuff. I'm not well versed in that stuff. It's stuff I've read and, and I can <laughs> come across it and explain it to y'all, but there's a million ways to do it. And I really hope they don't do it as a Tony Stark variant. I just wish they just say his face just looks like that. And to be honest, there's no goatee or anything. There's, there's not going to be a goatee. There's no, and there has to be some type of disfigurement as well. Kind of like a Phantom of Opera look or something like that. I'm kind of with you. Like, I like the idea of him just looking like Stark, but not being Stark. And then that making it an even more difficult thing for the current 616 Avengers. Um, you actually tweeted about this, and I thought it was a really good point. Like, you have Tom Holland's Spider-Man who had like a, a mentor-mentee relationship, almost like a father son relationship with tony stark and for him now to potentially be going up against this big bad villain that looks just like the man that was like a father to him i think is really interesting a really really interesting take you know and and there's lots of these avengers characters that are still around thor and, and so on that have had a big relationship with stark and if victor von doom looks like tony stark it's just going to cause um a lot of confusion so i i'm i'm with you there um i i say i'm i'm also at the same point as you as far as the storylines go i have actually the run of infamous iron man which is one from um i like it 2016 i think is when it came out but that was when tony stark was essentially in a coma after civil war ii and doom took on the iron man mantle and created his own suit it's not like tony stark became doom but doom kind of became iron man in a in a way but that's not really i think what they're doing here i think honestly they're creating something brand new i think they yeah. that's what they've been doing a lot but that's why i like the mcu they're like the comics are the comics whatever you grew up on is what you grew up on we're just going to take some inspiration but we're going to create a fresh new thing that hasn't been really seen we're going to pay respects to the source material but we're also going to figure something out just like the adamantium is going to be introduced as what the celestials are made out of and so in brave new world 
we'll get introduced to adamantium and that's how it's going to be in that earth 616 and so there's that aspect of it i i'm pretty i'm curious of how much of the mask he'll have on when it'll be shown that it's what he, his true form is, what his face looks like. And speaking of that tweet I sent out and the post, some people said, oh, there's no way he's going to know it looks like Iron Tony Stark. He's going to have his mask on. That's how Dr. Doom is. I'm like, well, you don't pay Robert Downey Jr. $80 million to hide his face. There right. might be a situation where that mask gets cracked and half of it falls off and somehow Tom Holland, Spider-Man sees it and just whatever happens and so forth. There could be an instance i'm just making things up i don't know anything i'm just having fun with it and coming up with some fun theories and stuff like that but the reveal will be really cool to see how if they if they do it and they probably will how is it going to play on screen and i'm just excited it's going to be two epic films that's all i can tell you i think the thing that i'm most surprised about as far as the whole hall h panel um it's more of something that they didn't do so we know that Captain America, Brave New World and Thunderbolts come out next year and they close out. Phase well, five, let's touch about phase. that real quick. So what was introduced in those things? So like. Uh, we obviously know Harrison Ford's going to be Red Hulk, uh, and then we found out. Uh, Jean-Claude Esposito, who's he playing? He's playing Sidewinder. So all the stuff out there of who he's going to play was wholly not correct. And I was kind of like lackluster with that. But it makes sense for what they're trying to do with still connecting Hydra around and other things. And that's, you know, a, a spinoff, I think, of the of Hydra, the Serpent Society. And just I think it's interconnected. I haven't done too much in depth with the, those comics, but that'll be interesting to see. It seems like it's a very Winter Soldier-esque film, but mm -hmm. it includes Red Hulk. I believe regular Hulk might be in it. I mean, there's no reason why he wouldn't be. <laughs> you know, there has to be something about that. Uh, and then you got the Thunderbolts, which is kind of like the Suicide Squad. I'm hearing good things about that, too. A lot of fun. Yeah, and I know they showed footage and they had the cast there and, and it looked like some people had different suits and stuff. But that footage I haven't seen anywhere. I haven't seen it leak. I haven't so. seen. I just read the description, which, which seemed OK. I mean, it wasn't anything like of super, super excitement. But we're in for a fun treat with both those films. I mean, you got Tim Blake. uh Coming back, he's gonna be the leader, right? It's the leader. Yep. Uh, so you got a lot they of. They set that up back way back in 2008 or 2008, 2009, whenever it came out, uh, the Incredible Hulk movie, and uh, talk about coming full circle. I know, right? Because it was teased really, really hard. So th those are the fun things, and then we'll go back to um, your point. We you wanted to talk about Fantastic Four. Well, I was just gonna say. You know, this was the first big MCU Hall H panel of note um, in a few years, I'd say, if like like really wondering what they're going to bring out. And I thought they were going to have some big announcements. And I really was expecting them to do what they've done in the past. I, I really remember them doing this back in uh, the summer of 2019. So I know it's been a while, but that summer at Comic Con, they were like, here's what's coming next. It was like, boom eternals boom dr strange multiverse of madness boom thor love and thunder bloom black panther wakanda forever and they announced like all these titles that we previously i think we we knew they were gonna make you know black panther 2 thor 4 and dr strange 2 but it was like they gave titles to these things they had dates you know and yeah they put the phases been, up there for like this is phase four or five whatever and this is the dates and this is when to expect them and yeah they didn't have a roadmap at all which could be saved for D23, I must say, perhaps. Yeah, I think that was the thing is I really thought that we know we've got four Marvel movies next year with Captain America, Thunderbolts, the Fantastic Four first steps and Blade, which Blade pretty absent from here. Um, you know, that's a whole nother story. Uh, it doesn't even have a director right now. I can't I, I'd be surprised if that movie makes it out at the end of 2025, like it's slated right now. But um, neither here nor there. I really thought they were going to come out with the timeline and being like, we're having Spider-Man four come in this date, 2026. We're having, you know, Captain Marvel three or we're having the next Black Panther or the next Shang-Chi or the next. I really thought we were going to get like here's a lot of titles that are really going to fill in the slate for the next three years. And they didn't do that. I mean, they stuck to Captain America, Thunderbolts, Fantastic Four, and then they had the big knockout 
reveals and Deadpool and Wolverine very present at Comic-Con too. But then the big announcements obviously were the, the Russos and the Avengers news and Robert Downey Jr. Um, which not that they necessarily needed more than that. At, at the end of the day, we got a huge reveal that I think left us all kind of knocked back. So yeah, to your point, D23 might be the place where they say, oh yeah. And one more thing, here's the rest of the slate or here's an idea of what's coming soon. Yeah, D23 has become the place where Marvel really puts all all their awesome nuggets because it's also for their it's for the fans, but also the investors as well, too. And I guess, you know, more of a Disney thing. And it makes sense to save some stuff for that. So we'll see. I'm very curious of what to be announced at D23 because uh, they did they did go pretty big. Like I said, I think they did a doomsday thing because they're starting to film Fantastic Four. And like I said, Robert Downey Jr. might be heading to London to shoot something. And I don't know how you can do a Fantastic Four film with no Doctor Doom in any aspect, and 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 Victor Dom, uh, Victor Von Doom, and seeing what he's doing in that world if he exists, because there is a Galactus, and that is the main uh, villain. And some of that stuff I saw online was really cool. Like Fantastic Four is shaping up to be one of the most unique things for the MCU, maybe superhero films in general. I don't think we're gonna ever see anything like this. And this makes me think. What happened to the main, you know, Earth 616 Fantastic Four that Doctor Strange talked about? Like, oh, y'all disappeared in the 60s. So, like, there has to be a connection with this film and then the Earth 616 Fantastic Four. Maybe they meet up with them, the alternate versions of them that look very similar, wherever they end up going to fight Galactus or they take them. I don't know. I have no clue what the plots are. I'm just sitting here as a big Marvel fan and uh, just trying to connect some dots but i'm always excited when i'm thrown off my horse uh just like i did with devil wolverine i thought i was going in for a different movie and it became a love letter to fox and it was fantastic and uh yeah fantastic four is going to be probably one of the best films in the recent years to be released that's a superhero film and uh how excited are you for that one coming out in almost one year I was already really excited for it. Like it was probably at the top of my list. Um, I've just always been a big fan of the Fantastic Four and I get some flack about that from my other comic book fans. But I'm like, man, but I read the comics and like there were a lot of times where other comics might have been struggling, but Fantastic Four had some really strong runs. It's just they've struggled to really do them justice on the big screen. And I think that's where and I think this is the time that you know, they had some success financially with the, uh, you know, the the Chris Evans, Human Torch and Jessica Alba, you know, the the old the Fox Fantastic Four movies of, of the 2000s. But then, you know, we got the reboot in 2015. Wasn't what you want. Um, and now I feel like they know third time's a charm. If we're going to do it this time, we got to do it right. Especially if we're incorporating it into third the MCU. Third time's a charm at the Fantastic Four is the fourth time's a charm. Remember that? Oh, that's true. It really is the, the fourth nine... time. <laughs> and it makes sense for the Fantastic Four for the fourth time to be the charm for them. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. So yeah, I, for me, I've been a fan of the casting. Uh, I am a fan of of what I've heard of like the 60s setting and all of that. Seeing the cast on stage together at Comic-Con brought that to, to life a little bit more. And then the footage that's out there floating around. Everything about it looks like we're on the right path. So I am remaining not even cautiously optimistic. I'm extremely optimistic about the Fantastic Four. This is these. It's just it's one of my franchises. This is one of my favorites a personal favorite so i just have a little bit more stake in it yeah i'm super excited we got doomsday and secret wars and then we'll see what happens beyond but who do you want to see show up in either or both of those uh like what's your favorite character if you've seen past present whatever what's uh, that you want to show up and be part of the team because they're not going to have just everyone on the teams that they're creating there's going to be sorry probably a couple that don't make the cut because it's such a big roster. So who's on your, like, must be on your roster? The must be is, is a different answer. Um, let's see. Well, first off, uh, like for Secret Wars, I'm wondering, are they doing like the old school Secret Wars of trying to pit the heroes against each other almost in like a giant game, right? The the Beyonder, I think, is the name of the character that brings everybody together. Are they going to do that? Are they going to go Doom is the one 
bringing everybody together. Doom's got to be working with there. somebody. Doom is great, but he's got to be working with somebody that has more grand ability uh, that he has. And then, yeah, they pit against the heroes, but maybe they're pitting against the different Earths, right? Whose Earth is going to live and continue, maybe. Maybe that's their way of doing all this multiverse stuff is you're it's like American gladiators and you're representing your earth. I I'm I think I'm interested to see kind of the new guardians, the team that we we saw in guardians, the end of guardians volume three. And how do they bring that in? And is Peter Quill coming back to the fray for this? I think I'm I'm really interested in that. I uh, I'm up and down on Chris Pratt outside of the MCU, but as Peter Quill, he's very consistent for me and I really, really like him. Um, so I would say Peter Quill and the Guardians I'm interested in. Uh, of course, after seeing Kamala Khan in the Marvels, she can do no wrong for me. H have her come do some interdimensional stuff. Um, are we going to have multiple Spider-Man, just Spider-Man, just Tom Holland, Spider-Man? Um I'm just spitballing here. I'm trying to think of other other characters. Well, I must say we need to find a way to get Scarlet Witch back. We definitely I need Doctor Strange to be part of the team. He will be. He's the core. He's a core member. But it'd be great yep. to see Scarlet Witch back. I need Wolverine. I need Deadpool to be added in there in some capacity. Obviously, I need two at least two Spider Men. So I need Tom Holland and at least Toby. Not throwing shade to Andrew Garfield, but I need more Toby. And maybe Toby with uh, Hugh Jackson's Wolverine would be excellent to see that um, happen. And let's see. I'm assuming we'll get Shuri, Black Panther here. We'll get Thor still around. So Thor will be a really pivotal character, I'm assuming, in both these Avengers movies. Yeah, there's a lot to choose from. Like I said, that roster already seems big, and that's not even touching on everybody <laughs> that we've seen. Uh, we need a Hulk, right? We need a Hulk. <laughs> could potentially have multiple hulks at this point you never know if if red hulk's gonna what side he's gonna fight for if he's still around by the time that secret wars happens you mean president hulk <laughs> president hulk exactly <laughs> and of course the fantastic four are gonna be pivotal moving forward um but i need my spider-man i need to see scarlet witch back because it'd be a shame if that was the last of the scarlet witch and of course the return of deadpool and wolverine which was fantastic i mean what a treat that has been kind of merging two different Marvel franchises past the present and uh, seeing how it carries over and it works. So I'm excited for anything that I do. That's why I'm OK with uh, Robert Downey Jr. being Dr. Doob with whatever they're trying to figure out and what they're trying to introduce. It's going to be a fun ride. There's a purpose behind that. Kevin Feige is a genius. He had his hands on this with the Russo brothers who are also geniuses and you put all that all together there's a reason Robert Downey Jr. would not return if it didn't work make sense to him you know he is the founding father as well for the MCU with Iron Man back in 2008 and so he wouldn't return just for, I mean yeah big paycheck but there has to be more to it he wouldn't cheapen his return for whatever reason he's obviously playing a villain a really great one and there's a reason why it's Robert Downey Jr. It's going to make sense. I feel it's going to make so much sense. And it's going to be an emotional ride. That's what I feel like. They want us to go back on an emotional ride and uh, make it tough again for the Avengers because it can't just be a battle against different types of strengths. There has to be an emotional aspect to this. And I can't find a better way to make it a more emotional journey for them in a battle than to make it like your founding <laughs> Avengers <laughs> captain, pretty much. Does Oscar Isaac's Moon Knight come back in any of this? He has to. He's. I don't think he's getting another season. They're, they're talking about Midnight Suns. Uh, so, and maybe they're saying a Ghost Rider announcement at D23, um, possibly. Uh, Ryan Gosling, yeah. maybe. And I just forget there's the other TV characters that we haven't seen again. Like, will we get... Um, she hulk moon knight and then we did see uh, you know they've been setting up the young avengers are we going to hear more about the young avengers soon especially we had the teaser i guess it was the end of the marvels where kamala khan went and visited um hawkeye the um i'm gonna forget her name now uh i know the Haley name seinfeld's <laughs> yeah, hawkeye character 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions. And then I did forget there are some announced Marvel movies that have just been floating around that still haven't been given release dates. So maybe we do finally see dates for these between now and Avengers I mean, you Secret have Wars. Wonder, Wonder Man that's been done. Nova that's a show. Be, yes, Nova is going to be a show. This is stuff from Kevin Feige. Uh, had, Armor uh, what, Wars was supposed to be a show, but they've now pivoted that that's going to be a movie that's undated. We have a Spider-Man sequel that's in development that's not dated. We have a Shang-Chi sequel that's in development, has a director, um, but not dated. And then I don't think we see anything about X-Men for a while longer here. But I do. I did forget that Armor Wars is is floating around out there, too. Yeah. Because we're supposed to get the Ironheart show next year. W- yes, which we're getting as well. And then, you know, when it comes to Young Avengers, I really hope they just make it into a TV series and not a full fledged movie, because I don't think they're ri- I don't think a Young Avengers right now would make sense with whatever threats out there. It would be a micro threat that they were going to take care of. So I think just seeing Miss Marvel kind of put them together in a fun way that's for the younger audience, just like Miss Marvel was the show and make a Young Avengers with that type of heart. And just fun and silliness at the same time and just kids being kids, but they're also heroes. I think that's be the best way. And, you know, Disney Plus is such like a, a place for the kids to, to go. Well, not anymore. Now they have a lot of other content there. But, you know, Disney Plus is aimed for the younger audience as well, more than the theaters. And uh, I think that'd be a fun way to introduce the Young Avengers in like a six part or eight episode uh mini, like a one mini series or something like that. It doesn't have to have multiple seasons. I think you do that and you can spin it off into something major for the motion pictures, something big feature film wise. So that's where I'm at. You think Agatha Harkness shows up in secret wars? Like, are they just bringing out everybody? Well, I mean, if she gets lured to the, to whatever side she's on, I think she's going to be a villain. She's like a weird, this whole show. I don't know what side she sits on and being good or bad or like in between, but she's got to lean more into the, Evil stuff. We need more villains out there. Everyone can't be cup just become good and join the Avengers, you know? Well, see, but that's how I view Secret Wars. I'm like, Secret Wars is like, no, nothing's off the table. You could have villains fighting alongside heroes. Like, yeah, I mean, Secret Wars is the one you bring in everybody. Well, that's why you have Although to make them protectors of their Earth. And that's why they have to team up against, you know, the good guys and bad guys from a different Earth. They got it. They got to join their forces and, and protect their own world and forget who's on the other side, regardless of who they are. Have they been inferring that Doomsday and Secret Wars are linked in the same way that Infinity War and Endgame were? You know, if you remember, that was officially when it was originally announced, I think it was Avengers Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2. And then they changed, they took off the Part 1 and Part 2 and then changed the name of the second one. And it was a whole mystery and we didn't know it was going to be called Endgame until after after Infinity War even came out. Um is that is that is doomsday kind of the part one of the secret wars is that or are we is that am i thinking too hard about it doomsday is going to lead into secret wars i feel like doomsday because that's a year they're going to be released a year apart i think doomsday is going to be more grounded and then we find their ways into the beginning of secret wars towards the end and they could do like the whole infinity war thing not saying like a drastic way but like you almost like cut it where like maybe they're going to battle or something i don't know i mean i don't want to even want to even think about it i like to be surprised but we don't we'll see what happens when this plot start leaking and so forth and how are they going to transition from doomsday to secret wars but it's it's got to be a one-two punch and there's a reason behind um doom and secret wars there's obviously a connection that everyone is aware of and we'll just have to see i mean i'm excited when there were rumors of the Fantastic Forecast, I was like, I'm not thinking too much about it. And a lot of those rumors came came to be. Um, a lot of them were wrong, but a lot of them, you know, like Vanessa Kirby was kind of pegged as Sue Storm for a long time before that became official and, uh, and you know, some other things. So it's like, I didn't want to put stake in that, but a lot of that became true. I didn't want to put stake in the RD day, RDJ rumors as doom, and then that became true. So now I just... I truly feel like we're at a place where I said this a lot when we were doing our Deadpool and Wolverine review because of some of the cameos specifically in that movie. But I'm like, nothing's off the table. Like we like anything can happen in any of these at this point. We're going back to where like the cartoons and animated shows were so fun because they just like, here's this person. Here's this. It's it's going to work. You know, (laughs) don't think too much about it. This person shows up to help save the day as well. They just show up in there and we're at a point where the MCU can just 
do that. Have fun and just match. I think that the Marvel movies do best when they do fun team ups. You know, no more of this like solo hero doing their thing and they have to figure things out. Now it's time for team ups, asking for help and helping each other and um, bigger battles, bigger foes and bigger team ups. That's what it's all about now. So, yeah, I agree. Which one, Doomsday or Secret Wars? Which one you're most excited for? That's I'm excited for Doomsday. I'm I'm ex- it's it's more in the immediate future. I mean, it's two two years away, less than two years away. But um I just I want to see the MCU Doom. I'm I'm excited for this. And luckily we get that s- soon soonish rather than later, not 2027 at least. Just crossing fingers, there's no more delays or anything. I want all this to be set in stone, be done with it, and we can move on from that because I don't like any more movements. That's all I can say on the days. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's the big news coming out from San Diego Comic Con. What a way to wrap up the weekend. I uh, appreciate all y'all for tuning in. You know, 50 episodes, 50 plus episodes deep. Don't forget to subscribe and share all the Nerdtropolis content we have coming your way. And once again, Drew, where can they find you? You can find me at Drew Munhausen on all the different social media platforms, login movies over on Letterboxd, weekly over at Fresh Out the Podcast, and of course here with Sean week to week at the Movie Goer Society, reviewing all the new the new releases and just having a ball. We just had our 50th episode with Deadpool and Wolverine. It's also, I think, our longest episode that we've ever done. We had a lot to, to go through there. And if maybe you haven't caught Deadpool yet or you're going to see it this week, go back and take a listen to our episode episode we had some super fresh thoughts we were right out of our screenings and yeah i mean always good stuff to talk about with you sean it's always a good time and thanks again for joining us for another episode of the movie girl society once again i'm sean chosh the mayor of the and we'll see you at the movies <laughs> <laughs>